um you know you do you do feel like you're dying i'm not even yeah. gonna lie um and you know I, I, and my 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 most difficult panic attack was over an hour long wow it was over an hour okay, and uh, to the point where my husband wanted to take me to the hospital because i was i couldn't breathe wow and uh, and i think you learn you learn what your triggers are you learn yeah. what you what to not do but then you also learn to look at the positives and i like to say you know there's this thing called glimmers there's things in your day that make you smile there's things yes. in your day that so when i'm having that tailspin why and i think to myself why are you doing this what are you doing it for Hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Zen and Now, where we deep dive into wellness, mental health, and healthy living and everyday living as well. Today I have an extraordinary guest on my show. She's not only a long-time friend, an incredible mom, human being, PTSD, anxiety survivor, but she's also making waves in the cybersecurity space. Her expertise and passion for keeping our digital world safe are truly inspiring. Please join me in welcoming Nadia Viren Patel to the show. Thanks so much Kishan. I you have no idea how uh, excited I am to be here and I'm super proud of you for what thank you've you, done. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Not just with Zen and now but with everything, the move, everything. It's uh, brave and yeah, from humble beginnings, right? Yes, yes, humble beginnings and you know there's no limit to where we can go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you can just share with the with the listeners like your background, where you come from and uh, you know how you got to your your career and where you are at now and where you are now in life. Yeah, thanks Kesh. Yeah, so I mean, a humble beginnings we grew up in a small township in the south of Johannesburg in South Africa um called Lanesha. <laughs> uh not to be associated with Malaysia, but yeah, um it's uh, you know, we grew up in a in an era we obviously were tough and um I think we we had quite a sheltered upbringing when I think about it often is you know we never experienced much we always just knew this little community we knew each other yeah. and uh and then and then you go and apartheid kind of ended and I my parents were like ha huh, let's put her in a model C school and it was difficult because I was one of the few you know um color kids right uh, so, so it was difficult and I got picked on and bullied and and but it was eye opening as well right so and then and then of course went to university started studying computer science hated it for some reason <laughs> and then changed um and left i left because also it was financially a major struggle for my parents right so that first year of university was quite a struggle and they couldn't actually afford to keep me in and i ha- ended up having student loans so i left and i and i decided to study marketing management and fell back into IT for some reason right. and then you fast forward you know 20 years down the line uh, uh still in the tech space but as a, a chief information security officer um and just yeah loving it i mean i found my niche i i i fell into it you know my early 30s and just so happy right now um i didn't get a degree in it i didn't study tech formally until now i'm busy studying my masters now but it's just been such a wild great ride right 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 yeah it's a do you feel like it's your like if it's do you feel like it's a passion now for you or is it it's something that that was just a calling ah oh, i think it's both hey right. i really found my passion like my husband teased me the other day and said to me <laughs> Ah, oh, you'll never leave cyber. <laughs> I was like, but I, but I kind of do want to open up a bar and just you know <laughs> go and take it easy. Um, but it is. I, 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 I love it. It's, it's such a deep passion. But I think it's also because I excel at it, and I find, I found that thing that I love. Yeah. Um, and I think that's 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 a lot of people don't find that right. And and <clears throat> if I think about like, I mean, when I went from development and coding and all of those things to kind of account management and service delivery management, management and management, managing an operations team, IT operations team to this, it's very different, right? And I'm happy. I'm so happy. And I'm so lucky I found my passion, really. Right. I think you, I think you hit the nail on the head there. We, not a lot of people find that passion and not, not a lot of people are able to, you know, do what they love on, on a, 
everyday basis. And I think a lot of them fall into that, you know, mundane, you know, you know, workflow of life. And, you know, I think they're not very happy in where they are. And then I think they kind of go into like a little bit of a, you know, just spiral of just existing. Absolutely. A slump, right? A yes, total yeah. slump. And you're totally right. Kish, you spend so much of your time at work, mm. right? And it's you're doing it every single day. And someone the other day said to me, Oh, I'm too, I'm too old to like change careers. I was like, What? You're in your no. 20s. You're <laughs> too old. I'm like, I may change careers in 10 years' time again. You know, I, I, I don't believe you're ever too old to do anything. Nah. Um, and I take a, I, I, I absolutely like took my hat off to my husband the other day because he is, uh, he was in the financial services industry for the past 21 years and he just changed and he moved into IT as well. And I was oh, like, nice. good for you. And he's loving it. He's absolutely loving it. And I mean, we're in our forties now and it's just amazing, you know, and, and, and it's such a testament to exactly that. Don't just exist. You only got one life. Right? Yeah, exactly. Don't experience it. But what you're doing also is showing your kids mm -hmm. that it that it's okay to change and it's okay to not feel as if though you you're doing something wrong you know That's change it. is a part of life and we all want to we all want to succeed we all want to do well and mm -hmm. sometimes something you do at the beginning it doesn't work it's okay you know try something That's new it. you never know what's gonna what's just gonna you know fuel your passion uh, i'm i was lucky mm -hmm. enough like i studied mm -hmm. it i did my passion from the beginning and i think that's where i felt uh, i felt my my calling was including right. you know like helping people and stuff like that so like i i mainly did support services but because that's my passion i love helping people i love tech i love getting hands on right. um like but i also i also knew that tech is a wide space and i need right. to i need to grow my my knowledge so i also i did my security badges and things like that so i've also yeah. had that um that experience which allowed me now to grow in my role, which I'm, I'm, I'm a system administrator. I, I look after everything, not just, not just the support space. And I That's think it. the grounding that I got from like, uh, just putting myself out there and just learning something new has given me a bit of an, uh, of an advantage. You know what I'm saying? And it shows that, that, that your kids now see that and they'll also take that into their life going forward. No, yeah, you were yeah. saying about uh, about finding your passion and then you do yeah, it. Yeah, I think my yeah my, my passion began when I was very young. I think my uncle introduced me into tech and my late yeah. uncle. Um, right. And he was, I think, he in instrumental, very instrumental into my upbringing and what I love and do now. So I'm always grateful and, and, and I truly treasure those moments. Uh, but I think yeah. what I'm trying to say is like you're showing, like you're showing your kids that that's, yeah. You know, kids see what you do. Um, That's it. And if they see a positive mindset, a positive you know environment, they only get a, the best opportunity to navigate the life. Uh, you know, going forward, you can't protect them all the time. It's not That's gonna. It. You can't give them all the answers. I think they're gonna have to figure yeah. it out themselves. And I think what you're doing now for your kids, both yourself and your husband, is truly, uh, is truly awesome. And I commend you for that. Thank you. Thanks, Kish. And that's. That's so important for me because <clears throat> I said the same thing, right? Is you grow up seeing what your life will become or what you can do or limitations, right? Because we all we all grow up seeing our parents and our families and our siblings. And and like I look at, uh, I mean, my dad was also in tech beginning, uh, funny enough. And, uh, you know, when mainframes were massive, you know, rooms. Um, and <clears throat> And when I, by the time my sister and I were going into tech, he wasn't, he wasn't there. He was in his own business, you know, sort of doing his own thing. And, and exactly like you, homage to my sister, who also is late now. And she's also the one that got me into tech, right? And we worked together. She was my manager. We loved together at one point. It was, it was, it was amazing, you know. But, right. and, and I keep thinking about, you know, if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have got into tech and found that passion. And she was just as great as it, as I was. And, um, <clears throat> And uh, you're right. I, I I want to prove to my sons that no matter how old you are, no matter, it, I mean, age is, is is nothing. I I mean, I knew someone at university when I was in university that was in his sixties that came and studied. He had three degrees. He went into retirement and he decided to study again. Why not? Right? Exactly. Um, you know, 
you can you you doesn't matter how old you are you've got to do what is good for you and it's not just about money as well because yes. it's not going to make you happy right um yeah it's nice <laughs> it's nice to have but i found that you know working in an environment that you enjoy doing a job you love doesn't matter what it is um you know just just do it try it even if you fail fail exactly. forward you know exactly that's a that's a line that i really really stand for these days even though with my ocd i really hate failure <laughs> no i love it teaches that you, but it teaches you a lesson right i love that fail forward <laughs> yeah yeah it's absolutely. like how we grow up you know we we grow up we we fall yeah. we get nicks we get cuts we had but we 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 get up and we keep going i think we it's like our our badge of honor you know what i'm saying <laughs> absolutely you got to keep trying because if you don't know i mean if you fall and you know what you did wrong you're not going to do it again but you'll exactly. try you know you've got to yeah. try um and that's what i keep telling my kids as well even like uh, my 7 year old gets super frustrated when he wants to do something and he can't get it right and um i think it's all of our personality right and i say to him i'm like no you've got to try i said uh dad and i couldn't just do it on the first go we had to practice and that's the thing you've got to practice all the time yeah practice yeah. they always practice makes perfect it's uh, not yeah. perfect but yeah. it's uh practice gives you the the more you practice gives you the better better chance to, to succeed at whatever you know chore you're doing or task you're doing and I, i myself sometimes you pro- procrastinate uh yeah. but i feel like even like yeah. this what i'm doing now as a podcast and stuff like that i think the more i do it uh, the more comfortable i feel like in the beginning yeah. i was like very very apprehensive to start because i right. felt like you know my voice is not great or you know i don't have the right tech or am i you know i don't have the right a uh, niche to go into but there's something that clicked in me that just said it's it's my passion it's my yeah. it's my calling it's something that's mm-hmm. just just start just do it just take yeah. out the first episode and <laughs> it, everything will take care of itself the universe will take care of itself and yeah. um that's how that's how i look at things now just just start something if it if you don't feel it it's okay start something yeah. else you know that's it exactly. at least you try Yeah, at least you try. And I'm so glad that you said that cuz I'm exactly the same. It's it's just start. It doesn't matter where, when, how. Just start. Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, and 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 that's the that's the, that's the 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 advice I take out of your story right now is that you know, we all going to have hang-ups. We all going to believe we can't do something or that we might fail at it or that it's going to be I don't know, bad. but if you don't try if you don't start you'll right. never know <laughs> so you yeah. need to know yeah no 100% that's that's what actually happened with our with our move to canada it's like people think it's it, it's it was just one a linear you know journey but uh, the trajectory was just very up and down we had like several challenges we had to navigate and uh, not having your support system is very hard it's a it's yeah. challenging we don't have like our families to call upon for for any for, we didn't have anyone to to call upon and we had to you know sometimes rely on, on strangers that we didn't know to help us yes. and thankfully you know out of the kindness of their own hearts like gave us a a place to stay uh food over you know food of a plate of food you know roof over our heads and right. you know just safety right. that we required and when that didn't work we found another avenue and you know blessings that now whoever is in our lives is somebody is people who we feel that uh you know add value to our lives and we to mm-hmm. theirs so wow th- it's just about wow. also being grateful for even the ba- even the experiences that that didn't work for you it's being That's grateful right. that you had the experience and you take a lesson out of it so absolutely absolutely it builds character doesn't it yeah. gish it makes no, it you does. who you are yeah i think so, growing up and, yeah 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 no keep going sorry No, you go. Growing up, tell me. No, I think growing up, I think same like you. I was I think primary school was great and then I got into high school and I think I had a very I I didn't like going to school. I was bullied, you know, every single day. Uh Yeah. wasn't very confident, lost lost a lot of self-confidence. Uh mm. And I think the day, the last day of like, you know, high school, I was like like super relieved because I knew I wasn't going to be in that environment anymore and when I got into yeah. university I felt like okay I think that's when my 
my actual life started to begin to take awesome. take shape. Yeah. Um, right. Because I found a group of friends that are really close. You know, we we come from similar backgrounds and we've we've grown up together. Right. Uh, so, you know, super grateful, like just to have a group of friends like that that you just understand. You know, like where you come from and and mm. where you, what you're trying to achieve. Mm. So the support Absolutely. is there, even though like we don't we don't see each other, we still keep in contact because I feel it's important yeah. to do so, yeah. you know, because you yes. never know in life where you where you might need some help. Even though you're the one giving help, sometimes you also need the help as well. Absolutely. Full circle, right? I mean, it's put, it's put you put out there what you're going to receive as well. And, and if you put the good out there, you're going to receive the good back. And right. I think we had both we, we both had similar experiences because I, I hated high school yeah. I can't tell you and then I was so glad as well when I went to university and I kind of flourished and also got better confidence and and now I won't allow anybody to take that away from me so no. you know I think we also grew up you know to be seen and not heard Kish and I struggled yes. with that yes I, right? I, know, I think because of uh, with the way the way we grew up and the way the the history of South Africa you know the way yes. our parents also like moved from where they were originally from like well, my dad my my dad was in fitas and and right. my mom coming right. from Benoni and stuff and then moved right. to like you say the south of of Joburg where we were just yes. segregated like in really yes. parts of nowhere and uh, they always say you know lens is far <laughs> yeah, exactly it is far <laughs> it is far and not even further from you no. like <laughs> But we, I mean, we, we, I, we just had an interesting discussion, and we, we always talk about is like we always now our generation is is trying to you know put together the pieces of the traumas that we went through as as kids, and uh, I think we, I think you know just to pat on our shoulders that like we're the ones like taking the on the mantle to break those generational curses, so to speak, or, or practices. But our parents, we have to also give them a bit of leeway and grandparents, <laughs> excuse me, and grandparents. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what exactly they've been through in their upbringing. Uh, yeah, probably they weren't brave enough to, to stand up and say, you know, this is not okay. Obviously, yeah. because, I don't know, circumstances we don't know. It's never been spoken about, you know, in our home. Um, That's it. Probably maybe for the safety, for their kids, you know, just to shelter them. And I get what you're yeah. saying. Like, we, we don't come from a very expressive environment. No. We come from like very sheltered environments. Just keep it to yourself. Like you said, seen, not heard. Uh, yes. And it's very rare to find uh, that, that environment where you're able to express yourself and, and it's okay yeah. to do so. Whereas now That's I think it. you need to show the next generation that it's okay. Express how you feel. Yeah. You cannot control the next person's feeling. You cannot no. control their reaction to your action. And I think we yeah. always try to control that narrative somehow. We do. We yeah, do. And we do. And the only thing you do have control of is your reaction to anything. That's exactly. the only thing you have. You've yeah. got no, but, 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 but we were taught and I think they did have a tough life. Before we continue with today's episode, if you're enjoying it, if I could ask you for a small favor, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. It will not only help the channel grow, but it will also allow me to bring you a lot more guests and a lot more experiences. Thank you. Back to the show. I mean, I have to, if I look at our parents, they had a tough life. Yeah. They grew up much harder than we did. And it was a safety factor, right? It was. And also, if I think about the fact that my folks, sure, by the time they were in their early, like, they were in their early 20s when they started having kids. And then my mom was 29 when she had me, right? And I'm the youngest child. Um, that's young, kid. Yeah. I mean, I started, I had my first kid, my, my mid-30s, you know, my early to mid-30s. And then my, my other side, my late 30s. And it's a world of difference because I was no longer a child. I knew who I was. I was more financially stable. I was more emotionally stable. I was just ready to have a family and I was ready to have kids and not be selfish. But they didn't have that. And and and, and also, I think, you know, generational curses are hard to break. I've seen some of the the, the, the kids our, who still yeah. live the same way their parents did, right? And they no. haven't learned that. And I'm trying to teach my sons that, you know, I, it's it's tough for me because I don't have daughters, right? And I always think to myself, my gosh, you know, I I would, you know, I want my sons to to stand up for women, especially, right? Because, um, you know, especially in the tech industry where we so few of us, right? 
you you almost see more indiscretions and more stuff. And I'm I'm so confident that I will stand up for it. I'm I my latest saying is is uh, I don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. It's okay. No. For some people prefer coffee or whiskey, and that's fine. <laughs> that's, right? of life. that's it. That's it. And uh, I'm okay with not everybody liking me, but I'm trying to grow my sons up to be that confident as well, is to say, it's okay to express yourself. It's ex- it's okay to say you don't like something. It's okay to have opinions. And as small as you are, my, my three-year-old, if he doesn't want to do something, I'm like, okay, don't do it. That's fine. Yeah. You don't want to do it. You know, we they have uh, expressions. They have feelings they have no matter how old they are and i think we weren't allowed that kish we weren't allowed and i think now some of us are pretty damaged adults because we don't know how to express ourselves and especially because i i mean i'm just going to throw it out there now like i saw your face when you when you said your late uncle when you talk about your late uncle it's very similar to how i feel when i talk about my sister it's you emotional Mm -hmm. you want to say something about it but it's almost like we weren't taught that it was okay to grieve. And if we weren't taught that it was okay to express certain things. So we struggle. Mm. So we were like, should we do it? Shouldn't we do it? We're like on this fence, right? And I'm trying to, I really am trying to say to my sons that it's okay to, to feel anything and everything. Yeah. And everyone's timeline of how they how they deal with sort of situations and process emotions is, is, is different. And I think yeah. I struggled with that in my relationships. Uh, a lot of them failed. And I look back yeah. at it and like, what could I have done differently? You know, yeah. maybe if I if I had known these, what I know now, yeah, maybe things would have been different. But I also understand that the universe was was always just putting me in, in situations there or scenarios where I had to learn something from those from those experiences, yeah. which is now then yeah. brought me to where I am right now and sitting right here and, and talking about yeah. these things and trying to just give people a voice to say. Uh, this is what I went through. This is what I was feeling, and give somebody else the chance to say, "Hey, you know what? I know, I know them. I know exactly who they are and what they 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 come from the same environment as me, and they, you know, I'm not alone." Yes. End of the day, we always that's the main thing I take out of all these is, is, these experiences. Is I always felt alone, and I always yeah. felt like I was the only one going through it. Right. And, right. Yeah, yes. and I know, like, I lost a lot of friends through uh, through suicide couple of years now in the last couple mm-hmm. of years and you know I myself was there as well like where I always thought of just like ending it and and thankfully I didn't because I didn't you know I was just overthinking everything and but I, I always think like if those those people just had just a, a little bit of courage just to say I'm not okay yeah to somebody oh, to somebody to somebody right not just me yeah. or your, your father or yeah. mother even just to uh, you know, just even just to a stranger and say, yeah. I'm, or somebody that you've grown up with, or mm-hmm. I'm not okay. I need help. Yeah, uh, that's it. first. That's oh. the first step of just acknowledging the fact that you need help, and we sometimes too proud to say that we need help, especially like trying to like figure things out by ourselves. We want to mm-hmm. be like, you know, he man and Superman, yeah. and just try and figure yeah. things out and take the bullets for everybody. And every, but we can't. End of the day, you we can't. We have to look after ourselves first to to and to actually look after other people. You know, like I always use that analogy of the plane when when the safety so, put your yeah. put your mask on first before you before of you course. have the kids. You know, absolutely. Gosh, Kesh, you made me so emotional right now because. I mean, I didn't know that about you. I I would have never have said that, by the way, because I I mean, I've always seen you as this really strong person. No, 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 don't don't. But, it's it. But it's that's not. Why, that's why. It. No, no, it's not about that. That and hence why I do what I do now is because I'm taking right. that experience and trying to right. to make sure that whoever is going through what they're going through now, right? Has, you know, just has something to know that they're not alone, and that's you it. can get. You can. The, the The journey is tough. Don't tell me it sucks. It's it's like, oh my god, you have no idea how how hard it is. You know how many. Exactly. Exactly. But Everybody it, sees this great life on social media or whatever you portray because it's always the positive that we share, right? And we tend not to share the negative. And that's a downside. And you're right. And 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 don't get me wrong when I say it. I always thought you were strong. I think you're actually stronger now for what you have said. 
because you know I didn't know that you 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 had gone through that and and it makes me emotional because so many people can attest to what you just said and can yeah. and, and relate to that right and I know for a fact that I, I was never in that in that space specifically but I I, I suffer a lot of PTSD like I told you as well because of experiences that I've had and you do fall into a into a slump into a depression and there's there are things that you would have struggled from and I recently almost had a mental breakdown after my sister passed away and it's again it's exactly what you just said I had to grow into a version of myself to say it's okay not to be okay yeah I had to I I had to get out of that version of it's you know Nadia will save everybody everybody can come to me I will take your emotions I will take your grief I will take your pain and I will hold you up no matter what but the problem with that is you can't even hold yourself up yeah your cup was your cup was full by then you couldn't take on that's anything. it yeah absolutely and you you actually had a detriment to yourself uh Kish so oh everything you just said is so relevant to everything I feel I promise you it's it's been my mind for for months and months and months and I especially you know I I, I even started um something called Journeys to Inspire which is to talk to women and neurodiverse people and guy even guys who are struggling we've got OCD ADHD all the other stuff you know all right. the other acronyms yeah. stuff. um that it's okay to talk about it it's okay people think it's our shortcomings I don't no. I don't think it's a shortcoming I think my OCD made me great at my job my PTSD made me a great human um you know and because I'm I'm way more empathetic than I ever was and that's yes. because I know what bad experiences are right yeah and I think sometimes having experienced those bad things you can so much relate to someone else who's going through a difficult position yeah right? just show a little bit of com- compassion you know compassion. towards that uh and it and it also goes i think both ways like we also i think we stand strong now and we don't take uh crap from anybody uh yeah. because there's so much i mean i mean there's also a lot of a lot of like those kind of energies around and people will try and like passively aggressively passive aggressively yeah. just you know you know portray their own shortcomings and feelings onto you but you also have to set healthy boundaries and say you know what it's not okay but there's ways of you know you can be uh, very kind to them and say you know what this is not okay uh yes. or if you're a very expressive person you say it how it is and if they don't like yeah. it tough tough to bad uh, yeah to bad i mean you know my wife is is very very straightforward and you know there's yeah she always says the truth uh no matter yeah. how how hard it is to hear at times but it's yeah. relevant you know i always thought like don't say uh something that you're going to make somebody feel bad about uh but yeah. it's not about it's not about that it's about it's the truth end of the day and yeah. you can either take that truth and and yeah. work on it or work yeah. through it or or see it as a uh you know an aggressive approach to say why are you challenging me you don't know me that's, that's you it. don't know my upbringing but that's it. it's the it's the perspectives that they bring right and we have to also yeah. Uh, especially like within family dynamics because yes. we love in the family dynamic you know like wolf packs the wolf pack will follow each other yes uh, until kingdom come but only one starts one when one starts to remove themselves away from uh things that are not okay and uh, and look at it right. from a holistic and outside perspective you know right. you you take the positives and negatives out of everything and the positives yes. what we had we had great upbringings we had safety nets we had great mm-hmm. education our own life i think i think we the way we we had our education in indonesia and we had top class teachers yes. you know even yeah. though our experience personal experiences weren't you know probably great, great. at some point yeah. in our, our education but they gave us values they gave us uh, you know discipline uh just just Building simple books. yeah simple simple yes. foundations like i feel like we mm-hmm. just had all of that even sporting wise i think absolutely uh, there was amazing opportunities not opportunities but we had uh, great times to express ourselves in ways that we couldn't mm-hmm. uh and we had swimming pools cricket grounds soccer grounds rugby fields hockey uh yeah. everything that that you wanted to do volleyball uh yeah. we had we had the opportunities so i 
I commend like the, the generation prior to us for, for yes. actually standing up and, and, and doing what was right. Because if they didn't do that, we wouldn't have had the opportunities that we did. True. True. Absolutely. You know? So we take the positives and the negative side of it was we just lived in a siloed environment where we just yes. you know, shut off from everything. And we didn't really yes. see the bigger picture because you also you don't want to feel unsafe. And I think mm. stepping out of that that net and mm. taking a chance is actually more of a more of a positive than a negative because then you see your, you, you actually test yourself uh, mm. more and you actually get to see your resilience level uh, in a far more uh, testing environment and you know you see the light like trust me you, you it, it doesn't take a lot to just Put yourself in a, in, a, in a space where being uncomfortable is okay. Yeah, yeah. And feeling that uncomfortable, you know, like they say, uh, you got to be comfortable in your uncomfortableness. You, <laughs> that's, that's when you know you're like, okay, I'm I'm okay. But it yeah. takes a very long it takes a very long time to get there. It takes a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. lot of sacrifice, a lot of personal grievement, like emotional release. It takes yes. a lot of that hard work, and I think a lot of people don't. Don't want to do that work. It's perseverance as yeah. well. It's introspectiveness. It's looking at yourself yeah. and saying, what can I change? What can I do better? Absolutely, Kish. You're spot on. Yeah. So and I would have I would have, I would have only found that out if I if I had the experiences I did. Otherwise I wouldn't have. Yeah. Been. So no, absolutely. And I take the positives out of it and I just try and help whatever or try and, you know, put a put a positive spin on things and give somebody else the best chance that they can to succeed in life. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're right. And I think I think you I think you're onto something here. I think you should start coaching people. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> not really, because you know, um, Kish. I mean, you say it took long. It may have taken you long and me long, but we still got there. Other people didn't. Other people haven't yet. Yes. I mean, look at our folks. Look at our like. You know, there's plenty of 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 our generation that's walking around totally oblivious. And I think to myself, you know, life is hard. It's not going to be easy. And if you expect it to be, I don't know how, you know, how do you get experience? How do you gain any perspective if life's easy? If my life wasn't as hard as it was, I, like you say, you wouldn't become the person you are. You wouldn't have had the experiences. You wouldn't have molded you into the person that you could be. Yes. And someone, someone once said to me as well, they like, oh, how are you still so positive? And I'm like, you had two choices. You could wallow and you could fall into this version of yourself that everybody feels sorry for you and you feel sorry for yourself. Or you could make a difference and you could change and you could just learn from that experience. Even though you had nothing, no choices for it to be have made for you, you know, it happened to you. But you move forward. You move forward. You change. You decide, I want a better version of myself. and. And that's what you choose. But it's all a choice at the end of the day. I mean, you chose not to take your life. You know, that 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 that's a massive decision as well. Yeah. Um, it's choosing to do something else. And that's the thing. It might not be the right thing. That's also okay. But again, it's failing forward, right? Yeah. Look, I, I probably have spoken about this. Like at the time, there was a point in my in, in I think twenty nine in twenty nineteen, just six months just before I came to Canada. And uh, yeah. I was admitted into hospital for two weeks uh, wow. for, yeah. for, for depression. And uh, a lot of people will probably think it's, uh, you know, what happened. But I think it's the best thing that, that happened to me during that time because it, wow. gave me, it gave me the chance to actually, you know, sit and, and really reflect on, on what, what was happening in my life at the point at that time. Right. Uh, right. I mean, I also like giving, having that exposure to other people who are actually also going through a lot of, lot of anxiety, a lot of grief, a lot of, a lot of serious illnesses that, uh, you know, you, you, you always see on TV, you know, you watch these documentaries and stuff and you think to yourself, you know, I hope I don't, um, uh, I hope I don't end up in that situation, but sometimes life puts you in that situation to teach you a lesson. That's it. That's uh, it. And it was a, yeah. My wife always says, like, your actions don't just only affect you. They affect exactly. your, the people around you. And I didn't, I was selfish. I didn't think about that. 
Um, yeah. I didn't think that my actions would cause so much a ripple, uh, cause a ripple effect, you know, and cause so much of damage. Uh, mm -hmm. And I get it. I, within introspection, you think to yourself, okay, what can I do better the next time so I don't... Uh, and every day is not the same. Like, you still have days where you where you just feel like absolute crap. And, yeah. Know, but you have the tools now to, yeah. navigate, to navigate it, to navigate those yes. situations a bit better. And I think yeah. that's what it is. Like, we just have to take those experiences and use them as tools mm -hmm. uh, to, you know... Mm -hmm navigate our, our, our everyday lives basically yeah. no and, you're right and, and and ask for help right because it's so easy not to ask for help it's so easy to just wallow into and 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 i know exactly what you're saying about the depression I, i've got i suffer from very high anxiety and uh, it's not a fun place to be and like oh you know i also come across as someone who doesn't have that issue you know because i'm always like super happy and bubbly all the time but there's moments where my anxiety gets the better of me. Um, and, and and now I show it. Now I tell people. Now I tell my kids. I'm like, mom doesn't feel great, guys. I'm mm. sorry. I can't I can't uh, play right now. I can't do certain things. And then my husband now, he understands me. And he looks at me and he says, are you overwhelmed? And I'm like, I do feel yeah. overwhelmed. I am. I just need to go and sit down. I just need to go read my book. I just need to not have the kids screaming and, you know, you just need to check out and that's okay. Mm. You can't, if you can't be there for yourself, Kish, like, I mean, like if I can't take that moment for myself, how do I expect there to be there in a positive, positive light for my children? Yeah. And that for me scares me, right? It really scares me is that if, if, if I am pushing back all my own feelings, my own, my own hurts, my own, you know, everything, how do I show them that it's okay to feel that way? And then also, I'm not giving them the best version that they deserve. I really am not, you know. So so I get what you're saying. And and sometimes we have to, and I'm kind of glad your wife was tough love on you, right? Oh, yeah. Sometimes, I, I sometimes don't want to like, accept it. Like, well, are you being like this? Why, why don't you, why yeah. don't you just be soft yeah, all the yeah, time? No. But at the end no. of the day, it's, it's, it's true love. It, and then and yes. it's, just, it's just honest feedback. and. She just right. wants the best for me and that's the best like that's her way of, of expressing love towards me and showing that she loves me because she also right. wants me to be the better version of myself absolutely for not us, just not for just, you, not just for, for me but for yes. us that's it and, and so vice versa. Yeah, like absolutely. now i almost so like i tell her exactly sometimes the truth i was never like right. that person i would never stand up in, in, in i'm very i was very uh anti-confrontational like i couldn't right. I, I couldn't be in confrontations i was very shy i was very scared to be honest right very very scared right. uh to approach uh situations where i was very uncomfortable but now now i look at it as as a, a more of a learning experience like you stand up to not stand you don't have to be aggressive you don't have to be you, you don't know, have to be ugly yeah, that's it exactly yeah. exactly you just stand up in your voice and you express how you right. feel and whether they accept that or not, it's not your problem. No. But you, you're speaking no. your truth. And I think I struggled with that for a long time. I struggled with my truth. Right. I struggled right. to accept my truth. And I struggled right. to accept that sometimes I'm not a great person because we all like want to be this, you know, person that's right, person that never makes a mistake, person that's just always yeah. got it all together. But there are times when I'm a total, I always say I'm a total douche. I'm a total. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a total, I'm a total, you know, oh, yeah. and, but my wife points it out to me that that's what I was and right. I'll take that. Okay. Yeah. In that moment, I didn't apologize. I should have, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'll yeah. try and do better the next time. And next time. Just, right. Yeah. And, you know, we, so we have this, this, these discussions and we, that's how I think we felt like growing into these, into, into our, our relationships and we bring that how we grow up into our into our relationships when we don't have the experience and we make mistakes and i think a lot of i'm seeing it now with a lot of my close friends and, and family and stuff and uh, you know separation is is not a it's not an unnorm nowadays you know in our society right. it's right. such a it's such a uh, an open open thing now that a lot of people are just you know 
walking away from their relationships. Uh, and right. it's like unheard of, right? What in our community is divorce was and separation right. was never a thing, right? right. And right. now you now you you understand like how much work it is, how much work goes into a relationship, whether it be with your partner or your mm-hmm. whoever it is in life. It it any con- any relationship. It's constant work. It's constant uh, mm-hmm. growing. It's constant learning. Uh, there are times mm-hmm. where you have to accept you're wrong. Uh, yes. And I think it's just about open communication. Sometimes we don't do it. Uh, we forget yeah. because we we default mode back into our the way we we were programmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you say, we have to recode ourselves. <laughs> we you know, do. We recode yeah. ourselves every single day. That's it. And in case, you know, all those things that were societal norms, like I, I, I don't understand this version of normal society norms or, or I'm like, I kick back against all of that, right? I'm like, what is normal? Because your version and my version could be totally different, right? right? So your, norm, your version of normal could be, you know, a, a, a man, wife, uh, or husband, wife, two, 2.5 kids, that's normal, right? Um, and boy, girl, that's normal. And I'm like, okay, but your version or someone else's version just may be you single on your own, living your best life, or you say, uh, living you and your wife um, without kids, living your best life. You and your husband and husband, wife and wife. Right. That is normal, right? And I'm like, who are we to say what's not normal? Right? Exactly. So, so even being divorced, uh, you know, choosing yourself is should be acceptable. That's what I say. And if one person is not okay with how a relationship is going, I don't care if divorce is normal or not normal by your standards. If the person chooses that they, they're choosing themselves, I'm like, good for them. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is that we need to stop with the, with the societal pressures. Pressures, 100%. Yeah. It's going to kill our next generation as well, right? Because yeah. I swear to you, there's so much societal pressure. Kish, I, I've never felt as much pressure as I did as a mom. My goodness gracious. As a as a brown girl who whew, waited until she was in her 30s to get married, then in her 30s to have children, then in her late 30s to have the second one. <laughs> I was like, and you know, I went against all the norms and and, and the pressures. And then I was like, and then I'm career driven. So that drove so many people crazy as well. And but just, why? Like, that's the question. That's we always true. ask, but why? Why is that Why is that not okay? Why do we feel like we have to have a timeline and, and do certain that's things it. in life? I know, that's I it. understand, like our parents did everything early in life. They had their kids early. Right. My, mom, my mom had her, like my, uh, my elder sister at the age of like 19. Yes. And then us, right. you know, within a five years, five year span, and uh, wow, that was Crazy. normal. Like that was normal That's for crazy. them at that point in time, right? Like exactly. timelines have shifted. Like the nice. world is not the same place it was thirty years ago no. or whatever no. time. And no. uh, like we said, we have to like just navigate or help people understand. It's okay wherever you are in your life, whatever timeline. No. That's your journey. Your, That's like, it. Your 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 journey. Is different to the next person sitting next to you. They could be Absolutely. three kids down the line, like you said, uh, at the age of thirty, which is cool. That's your journey, that's and good. That's you know, that's super happy. Exactly. Yes. But yes. like you said, just projecting that societal norms onto everybody else is is also a bit of a. Oh, it's wrong. Oh, yeah, we we shouldn't. Yeah, just give people t- time to actually. Have the best life. Out. Yeah. Because yes. that is in life we only learn like we have yeah. one life, we learn at different okay. bases, we all have different uh challenges that we go through, and not everybody is the same, you know. And we shouldn't put ourselves in, in those boxes. You absolutely shouldn't. Like I had uh, friends of mine that other day that, that that said to me, um, are they not planning to have kids? And I was like, Oh, cool, nice. And they were like, What? And I'm like, no. Oh. You chose, and they were like, you are the first person to ever tell us, oh, cool, like, and leave it at that. They were like, oh, you'll, other people say, oh, you'll change your mind, or yeah. you'll, and I'm like, no, if you don't want to have kids, you have no idea, firstly, how tough having kids are, because you have to be the most selfless version of yourself, otherwise, 
you are not giving your kids what they deserve. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I'm like, if you choose not to, that's on you. Nobody else has that decision to make. Nobody has to raise. And the thing is, I've seen too many people neglect their children because they never wanted them cash. So why? Mm-hmm. Why put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't have had them? You shouldn't. You're not going to give them the best life. You can't take a life back. You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't take a child's childhood back, a child's experiences back. No. You can't. You can't say the, the the words that you say to your child. And I'm sorry. I you know for me the biggest thing is is I never want to screw my boys up. I just don't. It's like it's like such a thing for me and my husband. Right? We were like. We can't screw these two lives up because we fought so hard to have them. I had a lot of fertility issues, Kish. I had three miscarriages. It was, you know, it was, it wasn't, it's okay. It wasn't a fun ride. It wasn't a fun ride, right? And it was years of, of IVF and, 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 you know, fertility treatments, money that we just never would get back. But at the end of the day, those two lives are the most important thing to me, right? And I always say, it, it, I appreciate it because I went through so much of grief, but right. I see other women and other men as well who just never wanted kids. And, mm. and that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> do, do I, don't know. F- I don't know. I'm so tired of that. <laughs> uh, so like, you know, how, how do you find like that kind of balance now with your career and stuff and you know, managing kid, managing a family with a with a high pressure job. Uh, how, do you, how do you manage that? <laughs> hard, very hard, very very difficultly. Um, I'm not going to say I have it down because I must admit, um, for me, I don't believe there is such a thing as work life balance. Right. I uh, I did lose uh, one of my kids when I was quite far along in my pregnancy. I lost my daughter, and uh, and I was and I was, you know in a high pressured environment. And um and I do believe that I lost my child due to uh, was circumstantial. Yes, it should have happened when it happened, you know, but I was under a lot of pressure at the time and I was under a lot of stress. And I think that contributed to it. Didn't make it any easier. It wasn't ideal circumstances for a healthy pregnancy, let's put it that right. way. Right. And um and I think after that, because my son was an absolute miracle child my second son like that boy i i decided i don't want to have more kids because i couldn't i just i couldn't mm. suffer another loss after the other three and then this one you know my my little boy he i'd gone back on, on contraceptives again after seven years of being off it i had decided said to my husband nope we're not we're done with this and whatever he was still conceived <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, from from eleven weeks till about nineteen weeks, I bled, and I nearly lost him so many times. But you know, he was my miracle child, and um, I made a conscious decision then, as I left a job that was also very high pressured, and I chose him because I was in a difficult situation again, and uh, I chose him and I chose me. And uh, when I went back to work to corporate after I think we stayed together eight months, the two of us, we spent eight months together. And uh, I, went, I went back into corporate, I made a conscious decision that there will be days where I will have to prioritize what is important. Right. And the days that my children are important are the days that I will tell work, thank you, but my sons come first right now. And then the days where work takes slight higher priority over my children, which is very rarely, then I'm like, okay, boys, you know, mom's just got to finish yeah. this. Mom's just got to do that. Um, I'm studying at the moment. I've got a, my, my husband's incredible. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, doing your master's with having two small kids is tough. I can't even tell you how tough it is. Um, and people ask me all the time, how do you do it? And I say, if I didn't have him, I wouldn't be able to because it's about your support system. It's about yes. my parents. Who are 100%. Phenomenal. Yeah. My parents are so phenomenal. That support you structure know, like you talk about. It is. It's, it's, it's so that's the foundation to everything that, that you need to, uh, that you're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. Because you can't do it alone, right? No. And, and my, you know, my parents, uh, my, my boys, my husband and the two boys go to my folks for the whole day, two days in a row on a weekend, you know. My mom will feed them the entire day just so I can get assignments done and just so I can study, you know. 
and uh, and I think for me, Kish, it's it's a balance of it's not a work life balance. It's a balance of what I think is important for that day right. and every day changes. Uh, you know, if I know I've got to do my son's homework with him, then that I will plan that. If I know I've got to cook supper, at a specific, I will plan it during my day. And then there's other days where I'm in meetings till six, seven o'clock in the evening, and and that's okay as as well you know my boys understand mom's working but i make sure to give them the balance that they give them the say. time give them the time that they require That's and how do you like how do you manage like when you know unexpectedness happens or curveballs happen like how do you man? i know you you struggle with uh, a lot of anxiety and so how, how do you yeah. like, what kind yeah. of like self-care or what kind of like you know things do you do to just help yourself decompress and and navigate those challenges yeah yeah, I think again, you know, Kish, it's 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 that it is tough, especially with the boys when they're small. They don't really understand when unexpected stuff comes up. So it is tough. There's a little bit of tantrums, and I and I get that, and I know, and I understand that. Right. So I'm like, okay, I've got to make up for this. Um, for myself, I throw myself into a bit of a tailspin. I do because I, I unexpected plans trigger your your OCD and your anxiety quite a lot. People right. don't believe me when I tell them that, but it's the truth. And um, uh, when I'm thrown into that type of environment, I try to I I do try to calm myself down. So I will take a 15 minutes or a half an hour out somewhere when that happens, and I will choose to decompress. I have to. If I don't, I end up in the tailspin, and I and I've had panic attacks in in the past. And it's not healthy for me or my children or anybody else. Those aren't fun. No. <laughs> they are most certainly not. No, not um, um, you know, you do you do feel like you're dying. I'm not even yeah. gonna lie. Um, and you know, I, I, and my, my my most difficult panic attack was over an hour long. Wow. It was over an hour, okay, and uh, to the point where my husband wanted to take me to the hospital because I was I couldn't breathe. Wow. And uh, and I think. You learn. You learn what your triggers are. You learn yeah. what you what to not do. But then you also learn to look at the positives. And I like to say, you know, there's this thing called glimmers. There's things in your day that make you smile. There's things yes. in your day. That, so when I'm having that tailspin, why? And I think to myself, why are you doing this? What are you doing it for? You know. Right. So I, and I read a lot, Kish. I read. Okay. I don't watch TV anymore. Um, I haven't watched TV in about four years now, wow. and the reason being is because it triggers my anxiety. So if okay. there's um, if there's action movies or there's Im- very high emotions, with my PTSD, I actually I, I I'm so triggered. I have nightmares. I can't sleep. I go. Right. I have uh, anxiety. I have uh, insomnia. And since I stopped that, I've actually calmed myself down so much. And I just read and read and read. <laughs> I go through a book a day. <laughs> Do you do you, but, do you go to uh, traditional therapy as well? I do. I did. Um, I did for a long time. Uh, I just recently stopped because I think I have space. Got okay. Yes. I'm in a space where I did try medication. It, it. It. I must be honest with you. It didn't work for me personally. Um, uh, but uh, I did try it for a while. But the therapy did help, and I think finding a good therapist is good for you. Um, someone who my therapist gave me proper tough love, similar to your wife, to be honest. <laughs> you know, and um, and and I needed it. I needed it. And you say so sometimes you just need that kick yes. up the butt, right? Yes, yes. Um, and I'm a firm believer in therapy because uh, I know our generation doesn't believe in mental health. Yeah, um, that's why. That's why I'm I'm doing what I'm doing is to say, make it a, make it a you know a normal a normal functioning you know existence of of life. That's it. You know, it's not, it it's not, you know, like we say, oh, are you mad? We always say, why are you mad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get over yeah. it. Just get yeah. over it. No. That's it. Yeah, it's not, it's not that anymore. <laughs> it's, it's more about, it's, <laughs> it's more about, exp- you know, just expressing how you feel and it's okay. Like, yeah. you know, you're having a, you're having a tough day. It's, you yeah. don't have to, you don't have to mask it or cover it up. And that's you know, it. Sometimes you just need to sit and wallow and cry and release and, that's okay. You need yeah. to do those things some days. And some days yeah. you can you have this this energy from nowhere and you can just go, go, go. That's you it. Know? And you can be everybody's everything. Yeah, exactly. You can, be, you can be the hero that day, right? But even heroes need a break. 
Heroes need sidekicks. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, Gish, the vulnerability thing is a. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do was to tell my husband I need help. To tell my parents I can't do everything for you anymore. Right. Um, you know, I or I can't be there, especially when they lost my sister. It was tough. And uh, and to also just say I can't be everybody's hero all the time. Um, it was a tough place to be because you don't become popular because you have to say no to a lot of people yes. who always got a yes, right? And they struggle with that. But once I got into a space where I was like, okay, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with the decisions I've made because guess what? I did it for me and yeah. I'm so much healthier now. And, and then honestly, you can give the best version of yourself to them, right? That's it. And to my children. My children deserve it. Yes. Yeah. My, I can't tell you. My boys are my absolute priority. And I just want to be the best version for them. Yeah, I wish I didn't have to go through all of those tough things I did. Because it's ma- it made me a bit crazy. <laughs> you know. Uh, but, no, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's life lessons. It's life lessons. It's life lessons. We're, all, cra- we're all crazy in a little way. We're all, we're all crazy. In this yeah, way, for sure. We all have our... For sure our flaws and <laughs> yes we, we all do that's life that's just life it is life you know, it is life and it's normal it's can, it's okay yeah Kish, can you can i get my battery quickly yeah my, sure sure no problem, like, no problem. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no problem go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right? yes yes okay. i will i will <laughs> okay. so i want to ask you um yeah what advice would you give like to to other moms or you know dads or or anybody who are in high pressured environments and and also need mm-hmm. to like find that find that comfort of bal- like you said not work life balance but find that that yin and yang to you know navigate uh, any kind of any kind of anxieties or pressures that they're going through yeah yeah and I think one of the <clears throat> one of the best piece of advice that I got personally that helped me was, uh, and I and I, I want to pass it on because it's not my own, is you're not going to get it. You're not going to get everything right. Mm-hmm. And the, the quicker the quicker you get that, and the quicker you understand that you are going to drop balls. There is going to go something's going. to, You cannot be the perfect parent. Right. But you cannot be the perfect ideal, you know, kind of person, like working person as well. Something's got to give some way. Um, and, the, and, the, and the thing that I took out of that, which was my own, was the prioritization. Is really find what the priorities are for that day. Um, I had a, a, a recent instance where I was invited to a new team to help them with something. And there was a, a call that was happening from four to five every day, you know, sort of thing. And the first two days, you know, the, the, the call went off at, uh, you know, 5.30, quarter to six. Then, you know, the next day it happened yeah, again. Yeah. By the third day, and I've got those two golden hours between five and seven with my sons, is like, you know, bathing time, feeding time, supper right, time, all right, of that. Right, right. Routine, routine, you have their routine yeah. set, yeah. Right. yeah. And then spend time with them at that time. So... So by the third day, I, I, I muted at five o'clock and I said, Jens, because I was the only female, and I was like, Jens, I, I'm, I'm jumping off. Thank you. Um, I've got to go cook supper. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And I didn't wait for a response because I didn't think one was necessary. Um, exactly. And that's the other thing is I, I, I'm never apologetic anymore about things that I have to do. Right. right? So I had the call. The next day I got back onto the meeting and, you know, they all started laughing and, you know, joking, and they were like, "Oh, yeah." So, what was for supper today? And oh, yesterday. And um, you know, it's so nice that uh, you know you've got. And I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, uh, "Is this not a meeting for this?" And they were like, "Yeah." I said, "So, why are we discussing my personal life?" Hundred percent. I said, "You said yeah, you're setting healthy boundaries, right?" Right, and you. That's it. That's it. That's where I was going. You know, as you set a meeting from four to five. I respected the time that you set the meeting for. Please respect my time. Exactly. I said, if you want. To go on for another half an hour 45 minutes or an hour then please set it for that time um and i said i'm done done talking about this i said let's move on and uh it's just say the meeting runs now from four to five every day five o'clock 
Yeah. Someone messaged me on the side and said, uh, you have bigger balls than I do. And I said, yeah, thank you. I do. Um, you know? also, like, it's not about having that, you know, bigger balls. It's it's just, about, just about setting healthy boundaries because you, I mean, you. you yourself have a, have a personal life that you need to attend to. And you have, uh, you also, you, you're taking on the responsibility of the meeting and from four to five, That's but it. you also have your responsibility after that. So, and just That's as much it. as you respect their time, they need to respect yours. That's it. That's it. And, and, and if someone starts at nine in the afternoon or nine in the morning and wants to work till five, six in the afternoon, that's, that's on them. I start at seven in the morning and I'm working till five and I'm not, but respect my boundaries. And, and that's the thing is don't be apologetic for having boundaries firstly. Yeah. And the other thing is don't be apologetic for setting and keeping those boundaries. Yeah. So, you know, respect my time. I respect yours. Everybody just works happier like really and i mean now everybody the synergy is so much greater exactly you know because they know i wasn't a, i wasn't a pushover right and i set that boundary right from the beginning it's when you don't do it and it comes up yeah. like months or years later then people see you as being difficult and, right. and that's not fair either but that's the advice i would give okay. to parents is is set your boundaries at work and then it's okay to tell your kids that you can't do something that day it's okay not to be i think the previous generation kind of left us to ourselves you know i, I remember us <laughs> kish walking to school you know at, at you know grade one and you're five years old six years old you're walking to school and it was fun and, and this generation it's almost like we feel like we need to make it up right yes. we need to make up all of those things that's so 100%. we are there we need to call yeah. seven five children. We are there. We are at the back and call. Like I am there. Like I am at more kids' social events than I am at my own oh. because, <laughs> right? Because they've got social lives, and yeah. uh, it's it's not disappointing them. It's also setting boundaries for you and them because yeah. Yeah. we can't. We cannot be there. You will be torn limb, limb from limb trying to put yourself in 10 different directions. And I see so many of my friends doing that constantly now. And it's not sustainable. Healthy. Yeah, it's not healthy. No. It's not Funny healthy. story. Uh, I share a story with you. Um, when yeah. you say, like, you know, you're walking to school and stuff. Yeah. Um, and our parents didn't have that, that time. And, like, my dad yeah. was working. He was the sole provider. Uh, and my mom was the whole. Right. Uh, right. Uh, we call them home engineers. We'll say home engineers. Right. Right, right, right. Um, Absolutely. They got jobs too, right? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, she looked after the house. She took care of us, you know, from a right. domestic perspective and super grateful and super yes. humble for giving us all that. Uh, but there's a time when I started, to, I wanted to play cricket. Uh, and Bakers was starting, uh, you know, to give uh, lessons. We decided, okay, they announced us at school and we decided to take we walked ourselves. I think we were like five, six years old, and we walked all the way from Extension Three all the way to to Lens Cricket Stadium by ourselves. Exactly. Uh, nobody. There's no hand, no hand holding. Oh, nothing. Dangerous. I think if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have been playing cricket. So, exactly. You know, That's those kind the of. Thing. Uh, we were we were super independent as uh, as really young children, and I think and I look at like I look at my seven year old, and he he can't survive without us. Like I and I spend an awful lot of time. At, with my children because I work from home. So when school ends at two o'clock, both my boys are at home. I'm here. They've got a nanny, yes, but primarily still the comfort, the the food, all of that comes from mom. And so, you know, it's me. So I spend an awful lot of time with my sons, and I and I and I think you know way more than our parents did or whatever. And I think we do need to call boundaries because the guilt kicks in. Oh, right. mom guilt is a real <laughs> thing. Yes. It's a proper thing, and people don't talk about it often enough, but mom guilt is a real thing. And you have to say it's okay. You can't be there 24-7 all the time for your kids. All, like, you just can't. You, yeah. It's not, like you said, it's not healthy. It's not, it's not sustainable. sustainable. And um, it, it isn't. And, um, and I think you have to look after yourself as well. So if you're giving everything to your children, what are you keeping for yourself? Yeah, exactly. And I think also yeah. like it's a of, yeah, I think it's a lot. It's also a lot of struggles for single parents uh, who yes. actually don't have the the support, support. Of, their, of their partners, and I think they're yeah. trying to na navigate. You know, also trying to have a career 
provide for their kids yeah. and uh, also struggling, you yeah. know, mentally uh, fatigued as well. So uh, yeah. I think what you what you said was spot on. It's like sometimes even those parents, the single ones as well, also need to understand that they need to take time for themselves to be there for their yes. for their kids uh, in a. Yes. I wouldn't say 100% capacity, but because you can't give 100% 24-7, but you can no. give as much as you can at that point in time. Yes. Uh, so they just yes. need to be kind to themselves also, just give themselves a That's break. Uh, I think a lot That's of us, it. we, a lot of us don't give out, we're not kind to ourselves. We don't give ourselves the, no. you know, the, no. the, the chance to, to, to be not okay. Uh, we just, we That's just it. keep, we're just so you know, critical of ourselves and we want to like yeah. overachieve and, oh, am I not? That's it. There's other days something like we we I was thinking about something or I had a chat with somebody I don't remember, but we oh with my previous guest when we feel like when we're sitting and doing nothing we feel guilty for not That's doing it. something <laughs> for not doing something right we are a generation of overachievers we are a generation and and you know the be kind to yourself it's the fact that you it's okay if you can't accomplish everything that you want to do in that day it's right. okay like you you it's i don't know it's so frustrating for me that i know the, how i used to be right and i'm so glad i'm not in that space anymore i really i because i i need i needed the reality check of watching my mom right and let me ask you a question do you ever remember your mother being sick Right? Yeah. If you have to think that hard. <laughs> if you have to think that hard. And they let were... me tell you, it's not that she wasn't. She was. It's She was. But yeah. irrespective of whether she was sick or not, you never saw it because she did everything she would have on a day that she was healthy. Hmm. And who did that benefit? Not her. Well, certainly not her. You know? And I had to come to terms with the fact that I... I was sad for my mom because now that she's older and I watch her and I and I look at the things she does when she's sick and stuff. And I say to her, mom, you don't have to do it. You don't. And she thinks she does. Hmm. And I'm like, no, I got rid of the guilt that says, if I'm sick, go and lay down, yes. go and take time out. You don't have to be with the children. You don't have to talk. You don't have. I got rid of that guilt because if I'm not going to be be okay, I'm going to be resentful and I'm going to be angry and irritable, irritable and nobody deserves that version of me, including myself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I think that's important, Kesh. And I think as as men as well, like I've said this to my husband, I've watched my father, you know, and I, and I'm like, you can feel things. It's okay to tell me you cannot manage. It's okay to tell me you're not doing okay today it's okay to tell me that you need help whether it's you know you you just want to vent you just want to take a drive you just want to do tell me tell me and and that's the thing we don't do that we 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 curl into ourselves we sit with our own emotions and then the problem with that is one day we explode oh yeah that's not nice yeah that's i'm like that i have that uh we all like issue yeah like just bottle everything up and when it gets to to the top of the the lid comes off and it just overflows that's and it. it's like lava it's that's not it. nice and we look we, it's just ugly yeah. versions of ourselves it's not nice it is yeah. it is but we and thought no it was, one, no we one thought, i thought that was okay because i thought I, yeah. I bottled every emotion like going yes. through like that period of my high school it was like i kept everything inside of me i didn't tell anybody that i was struggling yeah. with you know uh, social uh, anxiety i was struggling with exactly. uh, self-confidence i didn't want to like partake in anything right. but i right. was thankful enough that i had sports to express yeah. that uh on the right. other side where so it didn't like it didn't like overflow oh i mean like yes. it didn't like bottle too many times because even if i was angry if i was feeling angry i don't say i am anymore i feel things um yes i took it out on on, on the on the sports field or in that area yeah. i took out my emotions there yeah. and then i felt better and then i came and i went you. again but I, I I encourage kids now to 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 express if they're not happy with something, come and say yes. like that's the thing like the, our households didn't have that that comfort of oh, okay mom I'm feeling maybe we felt like we couldn't because it was never 
communicated. I don't know, maybe we did, we didn't, yeah. we did, but we did. We were fearful of of expressing that we weren't okay. Maybe when we were sick, yeah, we just showed that we was, you know, just the general colds and flus and stuff. But yes. life, 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 uh, life aches and flus and stuff. We didn't express yeah. how difficult. What we about mental health days? Yeah, like, there's just days where you just don't want to get out of bed. You just, you just don't. Cash. And I mean, I've now recently, I've, I've just said, especially after my sister passed away, and I just, I couldn't be. A good version of myself that day because in every meeting i would have cried i would have just not, and i just said i can't do it today no you could i it's mean okay. it's yeah your sister was so i mean it's an integral part of your life and when that take when that piece is taken away from you you know you have to start now putting that pieces together it's not easy it's, it's not easy it's you not. take you, it takes time to to grieve it takes time to process that you've just lost a piece yeah. of your soul that's you know. it. <laughs> so you did. You, you did. Have, yeah. It's like when I felt like yeah. when, my, when my uncle passed away, because I think just generally speaking, um, he was like everybody, uh, something I, somebody I looked up to in just right. life and right. how things used to you be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Generally, basically. And when he passed away, I felt what's the best way of me of expressing how I felt. And I put it in my blog article and that's how I felt. Wow. Uh, yeah. otherwise if i didn't go through that journey like i did previously i wouldn't have known how to put it out i would have bottled it i would have been, exactly. very, exactly. I've been very sad i feel very sad very emotional and you know something yeah. i wouldn't be able to like you know just wake up in the morning and and get going because you know the hardest step is to when you're in that phase mm-hmm. is to put your feet down on the ground to get going and carry on going that's yeah, it that's yeah. the hardest yes. part but i encourage you to I encourage people to do that, even if you're not feeling okay, and yeah. just start moving. Just start That's moving. It. The brain will yeah. take over, and you'll forget. You yeah. can't forget, but you'll 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 somehow start to eliminate that feeling of of helplessness, and you'll start feeling yeah. your your power come back into yourself. Because the brain will Absolutely. do that for you. It'll. Yes. There's so many there's so many triggers that that will will start to happen. You'll start to feel confident again. You'll start to Believe That's in it. yourself again. And, yes. you know, it'll take time, but you'll get there. Yeah, it will happen. Yeah. No, yeah. you're right. Life lessons, hey, Kish? At right. least we learned them early. <laughs> <laughs> we just in time. Just in time. Not learning it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, oh, so uh, so one last yeah. thing before we before we uh, close the, the podcast out. What's next for you? You know, what, what does the future look, for, look like for, for Nadia? Yeah, okay, sure. Exciting. Exciting, I suppose. Um, uh, we also, you know, uh, hopefully planning to move countries. Uh, oh, I, won't say <laughs> I won't say too much right now. Um, Are you coming but, <laughs> Oh, I wish, I wish. Um, it's cold, it's cold. But um, It's not cold, it's not cold. It's not cold. Trust, okay. me, trust me, trust me, it's not cold. It's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> is this you wanting for me to come there? Okay, I'll think about maybe, it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, but you know, Kish, every day for me is an adventure. Every single day, and uh, for me, it's about the experiences. It's about doing new stuff. It's about experiencing new things. It's just taking it day by day, literally day by day. But I, I, I do, I do hope I, I finish this masters because that will be a massive accomplishment on my side. I can't tell you. Um, you know, I knew it was going to be hard. I really did. I didn't know it was going to be this hard. <laughs> There's days, often days, I find myself, you know, holding my knees and rocking myself in a corner and crying. Um, but uh, I, I hope, I hope to graduate because I hope to be that. Uh, you don't you hope, know. You again, will graduate. You will graduate. I will. I will yes, graduate. Will. I will graduate. You will. And um, and my boys will look at you know me twenty years from the down the line and say, "Mom was brave and Dad was brave." So I think Abby and I are trying to do brave things um, and that's out of our comfort zone, which is the way we like it uh, because we both Amazing. thrive on that and we push each other towards those things. So, um, so yeah, we're looking forward to the next adventure. And, uh, and I think, Yesh, uh, you know, if I can just change one person's life, just one, that for me is, is something I look forward to all the time. So I do, a lot of talks and i and i try to help people and i try to i love that you know be there and um 
that's my aim for now is just yeah experience life get through this masters <laughs> and uh yeah just take the challenges day by day lovely amazing I'm so thankful Thanks. and grateful to you've taken the time out to you know share your journey and share your story and finding the strength in the vulnerabilities that we all have uh Absolutely. super thankful and uh you know i wish wish you guys all the best in your next phase of your life uh i know you guys are going to be super, super successful your kids are going to be awesome and uh i wish you all the best and yeah thank you thank you so much you have no idea how much this like helped me as well because it was so refreshing having someone else be super vulnerable with me right. and um yeah and you're doing great things Kish, and i'm so proud of you i'm proud thank of you. you as the man you've grown into and uh i wish you all the best and thank you so much for having thank you so me. much much appreciated super humble. Too, super yes. grateful thank super you so much pleasure okay. bye